Well, good evening and welcome to the Go Tave Goulburn Valley Football Show. Here we are, the second half of the split round. Not too much to talk about the under-18s at this stage, but we've got plenty to talk about in football overall. Welcoming to my left, Guy Morford. How are you, mate? Good, David. How are you? Pretty good, thank you. And John Jar, right? How are you, Jar? Very good, uh, Foxy, and it's uh, lovely to be here again. Yes, it is. I can tell you, uh, very much looking forward to it. First off, I'd like to start off with an apology to a couple of young uh, champions of this league. And last week we weren't advised, and I'm talking of a young man called Xavier DeMaisie from the Seymour Football Club and Dean Smith from the Marutno Football Club. Now, both these boys have made the Victorian uh, under-19 side, I think it is, and we didn't mention them last week, only because they didn't come through. I know Xavier's a powerhouse player, and uh, I think we met his dad last year, a lovely fellow, yeah. and Xavier's got a huge future in football. And a young man we've spoken about plenty of times, saw him last weekend, Dean Smith, where's the number two Guernsey, uh, can really play the game. So excitement there for the boys from Root and John. Yeah, but Foxy out there, if clubs have got any of this news, all they have to do is get in contact with Guy or Foxy, because I haven't got a mobile, mm -hmm. <laughs> ring these blokes and let them know, or let us know this news so we can put it out there. Also, uh, a boy, a Benalla born and raised boy, has made yep. it, going to play, make his debut this weekend for the Greater Western Sydney football side. Great effort, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This week, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I yeah. talk of young Caleb Marchbank. Congratulations, uh, Caleb. We know your uncle really well. They used to call him Wings Curtis when he played <laughs> at uh, your old Mickey Curtis, a great fellow, and he'd be, he'd be thrilled over the moon. And I guess Proud the man. old Marchbank family. Mick couldn't yeah. go through a like, without get some sort of nervous reaction. Yeah, no, no. Have a head or two on it. Like those old cars that had those. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> you right. go through with the doors. Well, like like the indicators are. That's it. He was but, a tough player, Mickey. Yeah, yeah but good on you, Caleb, and uh, we hope you make a fantastic. Debut. Johnny, you went up and saw your grandkids. Yes, I uh, actually went up and seen the uh, grandkids at the weekend, uh, David, and uh, I just got a little shot of the kids here and I just asked them to uh, say how they like the footy show. Okay, so you'll see uh, the little fella's name is Levi and the pretty little girl is called Maisie. Just have a look what they have to say here. I love watching Poppy on the footy show. And what about Foxy? Who's Foxy? <laughs> Well, if you're as disappointed as I am, and I know that you were behind it, Carly, I cannot believe it. You're a dead ringer, your mother, and you got your father's wit, and I know you, Gary, well enough to say I couldn't afford to argue with you anyway. <laughs> Personally, well done, son. Well but they done. were on the money. Yeah, my oh, yeah, 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 that's, that's exactly right. Now, uh, the, one of our most sought-after interviews that we've been chasing for a uh, year or two, and we, uh, John, yes. I know you hold him in great esteem, and I know that you work with him closely, Guy. And I'm talking about the boy who plays at the full back. Oh, John was up and about for this oh, interview. He was you very excited. Him through the week. Now, <laughs> why adds he? I think I have to tell you, we've Adam got, got his biggest thrill for the year coming to meet me. Did he? Yeah, he said that. He said, yeah. gee, I'm wrapped to see you, John. And is that, is that Tom Cruise alongside us? And nice. he said, who's the bloke with the rug? <laughs> it's not a rug. It is a rug. No, it's not. But we've got a shot of here of Adam. This is before he had the cosmetic surgery done to his vitabrits. And if you see Adam here, you'd have to say a fair set. <laughs> so without any further ado... Coming, coming from this plate, yeah, that's yeah, it. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So what we're going to do now... Up. We got Adam before last week's game. He had the big job of playing on uh, Billy Burston, who's in fantastic form. And uh, I was lucky enough to talk with Adam and have a look at it now. Out and about for the GB footy show today, I get to talk to a bloke we've been dying to meet all year. I'm talking about the full back from the Uriah Football Club. Adam, affectionately known as Adji Tarrant. Adji, how are you, my boy? Good, Foxy. How are you, mate? Not too bad. Now, a Queenslander? Yep. Tell us a bit about... Uh, your parents are originally from Victoria, yep. in the western Father region. grew yep. up down at Colac, yep. and mother out at Mortlake Way. Yep. Um, he played all his footy down here, and then once me and my brother were born, moved up to Queensland, and we grew up there playing footy um, around the Brisbane area, mostly played a bit of footy together at Morningside and at Mount Cravat, which is good fun, which is where I first met Gilly. Yeah, you um, met Gilly up there? Yeah, yeah, so we played four years together there from 2008 to 2012, which we had a pretty successful side up there and was, had a good run at it, which was good. Now, other footballers in the family, your brother plays footy? Yeah, yeah, oh, he's given it away now, he's got four kids and stuff now, yeah. but he was pretty handy back in his day on the Lions rookie list yep. in 2000, 
Um, and he also played down at Box Hill for a year and in the Sandfield for a couple of years as well in South Adelaide. What about your old man? Do you ever run around the park? Yeah, yep. He played down under 19s with South Melbourne. Okay. And then moved up to Queensland and played most of his footy at Morningside there. Yeah, QAFL football, that's the Queensland yeah, footy. Yep. It's good footy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think now it's even gotten stronger with the NEFL system where they brought in a few more teams and let the sort of the lower teams in the comp sort of drop down and they've kept like the cream of the crop in the, in the top league. So I think that works pretty well with strength from up for when they do play the states. I thought when, when we were coming up against Victoria or Western Australia, for instance, they were just dominating the Queensland side. So now they're a bit stronger and stuff up there, which is good. Now what brought you to, to Victoria? Uh, I had a couple of years off footy with going overseas, lived in London, which was good fun. And Gilly came over in my second year over there and towards the time our visas were running up, he offered, if he, he said he's got the coaching job at Ura and said, would you be interested in coming down and playing footy? And I was not sure how I'd go after having a couple of years off, but he talked me into it and come down. I've loved it since. It's a great club and great community. What do you do for Crust, mate, when you're not playing footy? Uh, just working for a mob called Harry the Hira. Oh, yeah, okay. So, manage one of their factories down. It's just a sort of Footscray area. Rick so, Jamison territory. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. He's the big man. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not too bad. Wouldn't want an old racehorse he used to have. <laughs> Wouldn't a bad type of Yeah, that was, that was a real good thing. Mighty black caviar for those of you that are familiar. Rick Jamison has uh, got a beautiful property out here in the Gambia, and I tell you, how do you like to own black caviar? Be all right in my backyard, I can tell you. Yeah, all right, now, a long-term partner in your life. You've been with the same girl quite a while. No yeah. kids, but you just sort of get out and about. Yeah, yeah, been together for eight years now and went overseas together and stuff. And, and her just, name is? Uh, Danielle. G'day, Danielle. How are you? You're probably thinking, is this thing sitting with Brad Pitt? <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's a bit like you, or uh, Drew Barrymore, mate. So oh, you, is probably, she? You'd probably like her. Well, you, I'll tell you what, she's not a bad type, Drew Barrymore. That makes <laughs> you... Now, tell us this. This will be, uh, we'll either talk to you, continue to talk, or we cut it through <laughs> right now. The YouTube footy show, do you enjoy it? Yeah, love it. Watch yeah. it Watch it every week, and it's just good to see you characters carrying on a bit. And Yeah, I really enjoy it. Like, I watched it last night, the last week's episode, because sometimes I struggle with training to, to yeah. get time to watch it, but yeah, I enjoy it thoroughly. All right, mate, now I'll tell you a couple of things that we know about. Um, one, you know that you've never had more than five goals kicked on you since you've been in this competition. Yeah, that's. I suppose that's pretty good. I think was that Saad that would have got the five. Well, eight? probably was, but don't worry. That if you've kept Saad to five, you've done your work. I can tell you because he's the sort of boy that can kick uh, many more goals than five goals. Yeah. The other thing is your conversion rate from foot to your teammate operates around about eighty-two percent. You aware of that? Yeah, yeah. I've always been pretty confident with my kicking. I think. Growing up, I was always taught, like the old man drummed it into me that it's the main part of your game, so I worked hard on it, and yeah, I'm usually pretty confident taking the kick-ins and stuff. So. Now, in the old, I don't think you're quite six foot, so... Uh, no, just, what, just under six foot. Yeah, so you play key position football. Did you play key position up north in Queensland? Yeah, yeah, played on, well, mostly down here, I play on bigger blokes, and up there it was the same. Played on the likes of Mitch Clark and Lockie Henderson and stuff when they were at the Lions Reserves. Yep. And yeah, always, I don't know whether blokes underestimate my size or just... Today, one of the most talked about competitions ads is today's contest between you and Billy Burston. Yep. Burston is a, a bloke who's just, well, I've said it on the show, he's just burst onto the scene. Yep. He is a quality forward. Have you had much of an opportunity to have a look at him? Uh, no, I've seen a couple of little things, but not a great deal. But from what I've heard, he's a very handy footballer and he must be if he's up there leading the goal game with Harry Madden, so it yeah. should be a good contest. Now, you, you're really happy here with your own, you've got a great group of blokes. How far can you, do you, I know you can't talk about six, so I'm not asking mate, to say that, but the competition is that tight. Can you, do you envisage it to be playing finals for you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, at the start of the year, that was our goal to be in a position at this time of year to be having a crack at finals. And I think with the guys we've added, like, Zorzi and a few more experienced blokes really helped our side. So I think that where we're at at the moment, we should, unless something drastically goes wrong, we should be playing finals footy. Now, you broke out hearts when you never played in the league uh, next year, or your chance? Yeah, you selected? yeah, definitely. It was. I had a trip planned because it was my 30th that weekend, and the lovely lady, Danielle, had booked us in to go away before the season even started, and I was like, oh, it's probably not a bad weekend because it's interleague, I probably won't be playing. 
not, not that flashy of a player I didn't expect to get in, so it was great. I'm not to be named, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to play in it next year if I get the opportunity. All right, mate, we're going to wind it up, but I will tell you this, you are one of the hardest blokes to identify in football. One week you've got a John Ormus beard out here, Yeah. one week you've got the shock of Melbourne today. Like, you look like you've been in Durham for four tonight. Trying to get a bit more speed with the aerodynamics going yeah. on. Well, 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 I'll tell you what, it didn't work with me. but. I, I, I can tell you right now, mate, I've seen a lot of great fullbacks in this competition and I can't think, and obviously I work very closely with John Ryan and Guy Moore, but I can't think of a better, I can, I can certainly have say I've seen great fullbacks, but I can't think of a better one than Adam Tarrant. And I thank you for tipping two areas, thanks for giving up your time before Mass Day, and also thanks for the support that you're giving the YouTube footy show, mate. And to you, Danielle, you've got a very special man, and we wish you all the best. And if you do look like Drew Barrymore, <laughs> I'll see you for tea on Thursday. <laughs> well, there you go, Johnny. You're yeah. a fantastic bloke, Adam. Oh, look, what I, the thing I liked about him was uh, how humble he is. Uh, we spoke about a couple of things there. How no one in his career, a uh, bloke told me at the gate when I rave in, he said, Jar, no one's kicked five goals on this man in any football he's played. And we brought that up to him, and he, and he really didn't know this that. Mm. But a very, very humble man, a very, very nice man. Uh, young bloke, and I was, it was a privilege to meet him. And he did say his girlfriend, who did he say his girlfriend looked like? Drew Barrymore. Drew Bar Have you met the... Mm -hmm. I've got to meet Drew him. Barrymore. I've got, Does she look like Drew Barrymore? Oh, I wouldn't have thought. Or is he lied? I'd, no, I'd say probably. You lied, yeah, I'd probably say a little bit better, Adzi. Oh, I think, oh, think you've oh, been a bit harsh on her. We need to meet this. Well, yeah, well, that's exactly right. And, yeah. I, I, and she yeah. probably needs to meet us. Oh, She's exactly. only you. <laughs> Won't that change <laughs> her human. life in <laughs> no uncertain terms? Now, just on that, that yeah. bloke who talked about that stat, I would believe that because oh, he, yeah. he arguably would be. I've got to be careful at what I say and think about this. Probably one of the best fullbacks your old seen. One of yes. the best fullbacks that your old has seen. He, he well, at, this, at this moment, he's the best fullback in this league. Yeah, in this league at the moment, well, absolutely. Well, yeah. he, he is an absolute jet. He, Look, the way I watched him really closely on Sandy because, well, obviously, when you do an interview with somebody, you, you, you take more notice and you do that sort of stuff. And, look, he's game on Sandy. To keep the leading goal kicker to zilch mm. was an outstanding effort. And don't mm. worry, the ball was coming in. They actually moved him up the ground, uh, Burston, yeah. to try and get him into the game. Tarrant went with him and shut him down. But he, he does it, and he does that week in, week out, yeah. John. He he does that every single week. Look, he's a player in the league that a lot of people don't. You say about Adam, or Adam Tarrant. Mm. They don't really know him, but now, like, he's getting out there. He is a very, well, very good Well, they know him when they plant him, John. Oh, oh correct. I'll tell you that right. Because no, he's, very, he, very he's hard. He talk about blokes who run straight lines. Yeah. <laughs> No, that was, Boy, oh boy, you we've said enough him. about him. Look, he's handy. Oh, right. Until we meet the Mrs. Wood, let's. Oh, yeah, we're going to meet her. That's because Daisy, Daisy has still got the title. But when he does meet you, you'll get the rug fixed up. It'll yeah, be yeah. Yeah. A bit of a cup, bit of a cup of three. It's uh, not a rug. Can <laughs> now. Anyway, we've got our Cheerios. David, have we or what? I've got to tell you. Um, Every now and then you see the ugly side of football, John. Yep. You see the, uh, you know, you've seen it too, Guy. Yeah. When supporters get a little bit nasty and umpires get abused. You've coached football, Guy, you've coached footy. Yep. yep. Where's this I've, going? I've coached a lot of footy. There's nothing worse yep. than seeing a, a former player, coach, coach spit. spit the dummy. Oh, oh, have a look at this. Oh, have a look Just at that. Just have a look at this. Oh. Now, Guy. <laughs> what happened? What happened there? Well, I, considering I'm not privy to what's just being put up, I don't really know how to answer Well, this, if you're going to put the show on you, in front you, of everybody. But probably some of your finest work, David, no doubt, is it? No, it's Johnny, all you, all you in on this turn? No, it was all Hank Lindsay's uh, idea. Oh, hey, is that right? right? Have you ever seen Benny Hill run around playing footy? Oh, uh, very, uh, very, very, oh, very, very similar. Very, 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 very similar. Very similar to Benny. Uh, I'll be looking forward to watching yeah. this back and seeing <laughs> what's going on here, but anyway. Okay, let's find out what happened on the weekend. We'll get stuck into it a little bit. Uh, um, Johnny, you... Uh, well, yeah, reason, mate. Yeah, OK. Well, Benalla, 45-point winners over Shepherd and Antique and Reserve. They'd be happy with that, Benalla. They put two together and back-to-back. -back and Especially I, on Deacon. I got a phone call from a couple of their muchachos last night at about quarter to 11 to see if on I wanted... On the training track still? Yeah, they would. <laughs> They uh, commented on Bruce's uh, bus driving, Big yeah. Bigsy, and yeah, yeah. Uh, they were also keen to know whether they had to go to the toilet or not. But thanks for the two blokes that rang, and I know who you are. <laughs> Moving right along, it was Kyabram by 25 points over your row. Hard to believe if you had seen the first quarter exactly what took place on uh, last Saturday, but they were too good, Kai, and looked the goods. And Marutna, well, 
Lucky. Oh, was it this game? And well, I don't know whether they're lucky or not, but they just had enough ammo in the uh, guns to get over the line by 14 points. Daniel Lewis, again, you know, he uh, was fantastic when needed to be. And I want to pay tribute to the Kyabram coach, Johnny. He's got himself at a level of fitness. Uh, guy you've seen him play. Let me tell you, uh, we don't know a great deal about the young man, but gee, he's fit yeah, look, and yeah. super disciplined. His game, his game on the weekend was really good. And another bloke that's playing really good football for him is playing the best football he's played since he's gone to Corrigan is Sammy Sheldon. Mm. I, think, oh, yeah. I think his move to the halfback flank has been as good a move as I've seen. And the good thing to Corrigan, I think they learned off the end of the game. They finally got Liam Ogden back mm. into the midfield where uh, he was uh, super. You know, and their back six are, are really, really good. But you know, uh, Barrett. Uh, and Hayes and uh, Smith and these kids. They've got some really, yeah, really good yeah. kids there now, Kai. But, uh, you know, as you said, the coach, terrific. He's got a big motor, yeah. but he hasn't been doing enough of it in the last couple of weeks. I think he's really starting to put it together. Lucky enough for me, I met Kenny Sheldon for the first time on Saturday. Yeah, great lovely, well, he is a lovely bloke. And Kenny said, listen, Foxy, I've got a big job this week. I've got to pick a new coach for Carlton. Can you give me a few pointers? And I said, yeah, well, look, if I wasn't the age I am, I'd take it on. But apart from that... Did you put me on? Uh, I don't know whether people... I put through your name straight up. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know whether people were privy to see Kenny address the players a quarter time uh, get for Kyburn last week. And what he spoke about um, was just factual uh, in terms of... I saw it. I watched, I'd never go out to the quarter time speeches, and I don't because... But he just said, right, are you blokes, you deserve that. You've copped that whack on the chin. They've hit you hard. They've come out and they've had a genuine crack at you. Let's see how you respond to it. And I'll tell you what they did. Oh, they did. I know, I know that D coaches in, I, like Kenny runs a bandy line, but they do it very, very well. Does they've he, got does he their, speak at every address normally? Well, I don't, I think I'm so. not privy to what goes in the, on in the if room, and I'm not all pre-match. Okay. Yeah. But he but, spoke really, really well. But if you look at uh, the score, like after the first quarter, uh, it was five goals, six to 13, 14, mm. you know, the next three quarters. So it's 11 shots to 27. So they dominated the game. But when you look at it, 25 points, you know, after quarter time, you're all very ordinary. But it also does show you that you aren't far away when a side dominates and you only get beaten mm. by 25 mm. oh, points. Oh, look, they weren't happy the way they started. And they really, they were realists about their performance, Kyle. You know, they said, you know, I spoke with... Tommy Sheldon and uh, Tommy was spot on. He said, you know, they jumped on the, and I said, I didn't think your first quarter was um, too fancy. And he, and he just didn't, he just sort of laughed and said, yeah, I agree with you, you know, and then they got themselves going. And yeah. It was good to talk to him. And Sammy Sheldon, yeah. spot on, really nice bloke. Oh, Sammy, you know, he's playing good footy this year. <clears throat> but I do think Yaroa, uh, they need another key forward and I would not be taking Cunningham off the ground. I would be leaving Cunningham forward uh, I don't know if I'd even play him on ball. I think if he had a Roman commission on the forward line, he kicked three, he kicked two in the last quarter, he looks super dangerous down there. And good players can't kick goals sitting on the bench, Foxy, and I reckon Cunningham should play forward. Well, we say it every week, don't we? Anyway, I won't go through the ladder until next week, yep. until the round's over. Just on that, boys, too, we, I mean, we speak about good sides every week. We went and watched Marut Matat on Sunday, and even though it probably... And realistically, it wasn't the best game of footy to watch. However, uh, can we do something about the phone here, David? Or yeah. every week you any do. Any chance of turning your phone off? Is there any chance of you being prepared? Sorry, viewers, we'll just let just David. Just Boys, every week we speak about the good sides, and deservedly so, but. We went and saw Maruna Tatura on the weekend on Sunday and it probably wasn't the best game of footy to watch but what I want to point out though is Tat and I honestly think they're not far away Johnny, Tat, I, and I really do mean that even though they're on the bottom of the ladder at the moment, Tat are building up and one thing I noticed too for, from Maruna is just the amount of turnovers on Sunday, you know, they got for a side who we think is going to be in the top six, you know, and I'm sure Blake will address this through the week but so many times they got up to you know the the territory of Aho and Lewis and then just turned the footy over. Straight over. Well, and they did it all day. And do you think they went in with the mentality, oh, we only have to go out there to win this game? Probably. And, and it showed, didn't it? Well, like four goals or five goals in the first quarter to two points or one point. But, you know, look, the t full credit to Tatlax. They've got two or three but come back in. That's the first time I've seen Tatlax. Well, I'll play. tell you what, Marugna were lucky they didn't get rolled. Oh, they won ugly. The tap were very close, I reckon, to taking that oh, side. Yeah, Would definitely. you like to say something, Dave? No, I was going to say that you were very complimentary of a boy called Flynn that played in the ruck for Tap. 
Yeah, I was. Flynn was exceptional, actually. He won yeah. probably majority of his tap outs, obviously, until Lewis went in there and jumped over the top of him. Yeah. But the other bloke I was very complimentary of, too, Johnny, was Sean Martin, Sean number Martin. 28. Did it terrific. The job Martin. he had, he gave away probably a foot to yeah. Daniel Lewis. Yeah. He, Sean Martin, did a very good job for Tatura. Sean Martin, I thought Paul Kirby, well, I'm not saying Tatura, but I thought he played well. Kirby's good. And everyone. I thought Billy Lovell, he's kicked two goals, five. I thought yeah, Billy Lovell, the two lines were good. Really, the two lines were good. good. Billy yeah. Lovell was yeah. good, but the thing, too, to Tatura, don't do well enough is this and it probably comes with it with the cattle they've got this said delivery into billy level yeah he he would have you know gone for 20 25 marks we're all falling 10 meters in front of him yeah. so yeah. there's some pleasing signs for maroon though just to say oh there was absolutely they didn't, have, didn't see many of them well well they didn't have no many. no there uh, was but i just think mcdonald was huge out johnny oh yeah mcdonald's huge, huge yeah. but if they're coming up and they're a side that's third on the ladder like i've given them a big rap last week and i walked away from there i was really disappointed well their rap one was out yeah, well, you know, but that's that's a part Big of the Joey, game. Like, Joey's uh, yeah. out. He's gone on holidays. Yeah, Webster's but, injured. Yeah, okay. Well, they, you know, there are a few big outs. So it's good. And Tap were fantastic. Don't. don't mm. Oh, their pressure was terrific. Right. But I think there's a you know there's a few bonuses for Maroon. It's not all doom and gloom when you had had, a, had as many outs. Well, I'll tell you know. this: if they play like that in the next four weeks, they won't win a game in the next four weeks. Well, okay, then. Well, you heard it right here on the GB. They culture. have to play you, a lot you absolutely. It. No, well, I think if they if they want to make the top six, they've got to change the way their game style is. Oh, yeah. They just can't go out with that attitude. Mm. Okay, well, we've got uh, three big games this week. I'll just tell Do you. Do we have Cheerios first or not? Yeah, right. Sorry, forget us, right. folks. Yeah. Go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Jess, where's your running sheet? All right, my Cheerios. First two. Well, I've done the Cheerios. Timmy Scarlet. Timmy, my old mate there. Yeah. Yeah. You're Owie. You're Owie? You're Owie. You're Owie. Oh, you're Owie. But anyway, Timmy, I seen him through the week and uh, it's a uh, sad day. And I said I'd send him a Cheerio. So to you, Timmy, Good all the best. Timmy. Good on you, Timmy. Keep running that band for your son. You're doing a magnificent job. <clears throat> Went to Marutna on Sunday, Foxy. Guess who gave me 10 goals in Marutna? And to Chura. Fergie. Fergie. Oh, for a can no. of coke. For a can of coke. Yeah. I nearly choked on it. I had to drink it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he paid up his debt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good on you, Good Ferg. On you, Ferg. Yeah, paid yeah. his debt up, Ferg. And I've got to send a cheerio to Ryan Thompson, the boy from Marutna. Yep. Come and introduce himself to me on uh, Sunday. And uh, I'll just give you a tip, Ryan. Go back to the halfback flank, mate, because that's where you played your best footy. I thought you were playing really <laughs> good footy there. I reckon they've moved you around. When he was on the halfback flank, went through the midfield, back to the halfback flank, he was playing good footy. Runs right. hard at the footy, Johnny. Oh, yeah, and I reckon that's where he's going to go back to. I thought he might have been the catalyst in the, in the, in the last quarter, Johnny. But I tell you what, he had a pair of boots on, Sandy. He was lacing them up out in front of the rooms. I oh, wouldn't wear them to a you-know-what fight. Oh, that was right. Footy boots? Really? Oh, yeah. What, the right. colour? All colours. Oh. All different roles. Yeah, yeah. All oh, the you colours come are and see the way, mate. Ryan, I'll tell you, out. Be the foot fox. Just yeah, don't, nah. don't fool in the old white diamonds. Please. All right. You got a cheerio or not? I did my cheerios to, um, no. to Dean and... and no. Oh, I, I, no, I've got to send a cheerio to... Oh, uh, he's off for you. To, yeah, to off. Uh, my very good friend uh, who happens to be going out with James Marks yeah. from the uh, Maroobna Football Club, Leah Wind. Wine. Leah, oh, Leah yeah. Wine. 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 Yep. yep. Sorry, Leah, she's a glamour. I'll show you this photo of her here right now. Ah, oh, here we go. That's me and Leah. Tell you, she's fairly handy, yeah. and I think the old hand was wandering around <laughs> the redhead shoulder like this. She was straight in your rug yeah. up. It's yeah. funny, it's yeah. funny. I saw her in your row yesterday, and she said, Who is that fox bloke? Yeah. He's, yeah. he's a bit of a exactly bloody right. creep, dude. I yeah. said, Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, anyway, anyway yeah. my cheerio. Right, 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 Right. right, don't win the game. So Carry on. No, we're not because you've got a uh, we've got an interesting email from a oh, man yeah. from Seymour this week. Morph. Ah, we did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, talk, about, so you, talk about put a bloke on the spot. No, oh, I'm sorry. It was delivered to Haig, and Haig's wife uh, dictated to Guy. So if he gets any names wrong here, you know it's Voltages. Right, eh? Hi. Watch your show every week and enjoy it. Just one thing with the Seymour under 18s. It is just not the assumption boys that play in this team. They have Seymour boys as well, with a big exclamation mark. Also, I don't know if you realise that 15 of the team actually go to Assumption College and a bus leaves Seymour every day to take them there only to the Catholic High School. Sorry. I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to read this in right yeah. here because we read the, the, only, we, Catholic we wrote this the only, only Catholic school in the area 
as a Seymour Catholic school only caters up to year 10. Some of them are from out of Seymour as well. In the best six last week, the first three were all from Seymour, and that's from Craig Hockley. Now, I reckon... Good on you, Craig. Good on you, Craig. Thanks for the money. for the Mario. I reckon he's having a go at Mario. And I think he's having a go at the cooch. Our old cooch. Oh, that's good. Oh, he deserves that. Yeah. He is a smarty, Craig. And you're entitled to send that message off. But I tell you what, if anyone, that's great. That if anyone's yeah. got feedback out there, make sure you send that's it to That's positive more. feedback. Wallsmilebag.gmail.com. Go, David. Okay, well, there's three games this week. The broadcast game is between Mansfield and Rochester. Won't that be a do or die down struggle up there? Seymour take on the Swans. United take on Achuca. There's only three games, as I said, and they promise to be beauties. To talk about... Rochester and Manfield. We're well, just going to try something a little bit different this evening. Johnny, tell us about Rochester. Yeah, look, uh, Rochester, as we know, are uh, sitting on top of the ladder and eight zip. Uh, they're just going on beautiful, Rochester, and this side. And their back line, which it is, you people told me it was Nathan Maroney. It's Nathan Marone. It's not Maroney. I so bet you it is. It's Nathan I'd, Marone. I'd beg the differ. Oh, I think yeah. it's Maroney. It's, it's Marone. Marone. It's Marone. It's, Mar- it's Nathan Maroney, and I'll tell you what. We will stand corrected there because yeah. I'm telling you, I've spoken to the Rochi people. That's Nathan Maroon. Anyway, oh, Nick Knight off the Maroney. half-back flank. Nick Knight off the half-back flank has been it's a very good Nick Knight, it's Nick Nicker. <laughs> yeah, it's Nickers. Trent uh, Bacon is another kid. On the, he's only mm. a young bloke young on the half-back blood. flank. Yep. He's been really good. But, and Nick O'Connor. But let's talk a bit about the coach, boys. James Flaherty. Look, he, no one's sort of given him much credit. He has done a magnificent job over there with Daniel Smith. I think uh, Daniel's, who was at Benigo, obviously also coached the uh, Rochester side. These two guys... To a flag. Uh, yeah, and these two guys uh, have done an absolutely wonderful job. And uh, James Flaherty, look, I went over and I've only seen him play the once at centre back. He's one of the best negators in the game He's that I've seen. He's a player. And, you know, somewhere down the track, we've got to get an interview with this bloke because he'd be a very interesting man to talk to. But uh, to you, James, congratulations. And to Daniel, obviously, you're working hand-in-hand. You've done a wonderful job. It's a credit to you. I just hope you haven't reached the top of the mountain too quick. Uh, But at this stage, you're going on and you're doing a wonderful job, and I want to congratulate you. I want to talk about blokes like Dylan Williams, who, uh, you know, this year, this kid's gone ahead leaps and bounds, Dylan Williams. They're using him through the midfield. He's been absolutely uh, magnificent for him, uh, Dylan Williams, and that's why I had him in my top 50. He's been really good. Any any relation to the bloke he used to coach him? The Uh, dirty? Yeah. Nephew. Nephew. Yeah. Uh, Ash Watson. Is that Crowbar's boy? Crowbar's boy. Yeah. Uh, Ash Watson, he's been in the best six time. A bloke that's uh, getting under the radar a little bit this year, Daniel Anderson. He's been really, really good mm. from in the midfield. He's been in the best five Has time. Been. Foxy, he's been uh, really good from Brody Green and Lee Millard on the wing. He's, he's a development to a really, really good kid, this kid. Johnny, I've seen Ash play a couple of times this year, Ash Watson. Yep. And I do get concerned about uh, the tackling that's placed upon Watson on occasions. The what? Must, the what? The tackling. Yeah. I yeah. think he's, he's a prolific ball getter. He's probably, arguably, one of the fairest competition players that we've got. And I reckon sometimes, because of his ability, because they think blokes can just go through that and cop it week in, week out. It's just an opinion that I've got, and I think probably... What, do you yeah. think that Rochi don't look after him well enough? Oh, I think Rochi look after him, but it, but I think he gets unnecessary attention. Okay. Oh, well, good, um, good players, good players always get attention. They yeah, I don't get. dispute that. And, and, and you've got to do that. You've got to shut these players. You've got okay. to shut him down from 40 do it to fairly. 20 positions. Do it fairly. That's oh, I think they do it fairly, but oh. if he's getting that attention, well, then it comes back to his teammates to protect him. He's been in the best six times this yeah. year. I'd love to go back to the start of the year when we did our um, little predictions on Morrison Medal. Yeah. And I think you might find, Hagi, we can get this footage. I had him right up. I think I had him my second pick to win the medal. Oh, so well. good on you, Ash. Well, so just don't no, come on the show and start no, bragging. Well, I'm just well, 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 getting you I know, from the night. Anyway, Stephen Strugan, he's kicked 30 goals. He's been terrific. <laughs> Dylan Cutris and Jacob Perry. Uh, Elliot Bowen, does he play this week? Probably not. Uh, and the next four is United, Marupa, Mansfield and Seymour. But just to run through some of that, they've had 19 goal kickers for the year, which is a, a pretty good return mm-hmm. for a side like that. We know Grant Weeks kicked 103 last year. Uh, obviously, he's not there. Dylan Cutras kicked 39 last year. He's got 13, so he's on his way to being all right. Chris uh, Saunders, who is 10, he's kicked three. Nick Knight, he kicked uh, nine. He's kicked seven uh, so far this year. Elliot Bowen, six and 12. So he only had six last year and 12. But where they make it up is Stephen Struben. He's kicked 30. Jacob Perry, 10. Heath Aiken, eight. And Dylan Williams, you know, on ball with uh, seven, which is a great return from... Uh, Look, uh, they're going along beautifully. As I said, I just hope they haven't reached the top of the mountain too quick. 
but to James Flaherty, uh, you've done a magnificent job and just keep it on. David, and you know, let you talk about Mansfield. Well, I'll talk about Mansfield and I'll have to do it quickly because um, Mansfield, uh, they are the danger side. Mm. Make no mistake about this model. Getting it together there. now. They're getting a few back. They're very, very good at home. They probably don't travel as, travel as well as most, but come the end of the season, the draw's been brutal to them. If they can steal one, or possibly two out of the next four, I'll go out and say, Johnny, that they'll play finals footy. Well, they played watching and well, twice in the next three weeks. I know, but ridiculous. you never know what can Don't happen. Don't bring his draws never to know again. what can happen. Keep going. But I will say this, that they've got some class acts out there now. Jamie Sheen, a huge return, oh, yeah. can really play the game. Jamie, we've spoken about Mark Jones before. Nick Gray, touch of class. George Burberry, well, all reports are he can play. I don't know whether he's settled into uh, country footy as yet, and I think once he gets a little bit happier in his own domain, you're going to see the best of Burberry. Uh, ben Fagan's a good player, either end of the ground. Uh, Joe Cousins is honest as the day is long, John. Yeah. yeah. they got the Hines. There's a couple of them, they go okay, but what concerns me is their next four are... Achuka, United, Rochi and the Swans and that's after playing uh, Rochi. I think they may get Achuka. I think it's going to be, or they may get the Swans. If they could pick up um, if they could pick up Manch, uh, United, it would be very, very handy for them. Pleasingly, they've had 24 goal kickers for the year, John. That's, yeah, that's that means they're playing. Big Simon's doing a great job. He's a lovely bloke. They're good people out there and the main thing that they've got is that they're playing as mates and I think Oh, I think they'll get done this weekend because it's a Rochi, but if it was at Mansfield, I might I might waver on that a little bit. But yeah, I'll go for Rochi. Just uh, just on that, uh, Rochi have kicked 313 more points, uh, um, boys in uh, Mansfield, and they've had 75 points less kicked against them. So their stats are pretty good. Uh, if there's going to be an upset, this could be it because they're just starting to find a bit of form. They've got some really good players coming back into that side. I think Rochi will get it, get there, but it'll be under two goals. Mm. I think I think Rochi will get it done, boys. I just that stat there though that worries me that. Rochi have kicked 313 points more than yeah. Mansfield, and that probably is a telling sign. When you're travelling to Rochi, it's a hard road trip. Yeah. But I agree with both of you exactly what you said. Mansfield are on the march. Oh, yeah. OK, let's have a look at the guy. You and I are going to talk about the Swans and Seymour, and you are going to talk about Seymour. Mm. Well, I better get the paperwork organised because... Um, here we go. Yes, I am going to talk about Seymour. Uh, where's this going? This is at uh, Princess Park, isn't yep, it? Yep. Yeah, seven first six. So, yeah, look at the moment, Seymour. Sard Sard is, is 20 goals this year. He's probably, one would say at the moment, a little bit underachieving from what he... 82. 82. He kicked last year. So yeah. he's he's probably behind at the moment. Bon Getty on 17. He had a ripper start to the year, boys, but we just haven't he's seen injured. him on the, on the park enough at the moment. Yeah, yeah Rory Scopel, Dylan Scopel, you know, both the Scopel boys have chipped in with 8 and 6, so they're going well. Meredith, you know, a great player down there, Brett Meredith. Um, kicked 12 goals for the, at the moment this year. Harrison Wheeler, Jason Cole, you know, this bloke, I love the way you go about it, Jason, the hard and in and under football. Braden Grenfell, kick five. Paul Scanlon, boys, out and out great player on this list here at the moment. Brent Colbert, you know, leading them well down there. A you know, little bit of an injury doubt lately. Hugh Robinson, another good player. Probably, you know, the last few weeks haven't heard much about Hugh, and we saw him at um, Interleague this year and gave him a bit of a rap. So I think the thing with, with senior footy now, Hugh, at your age is, mate, is just consistency. So we need... Obviously, you know, to, to get yourself up in that upper echelon of players, what you need to see now is consistency in your football. So, an absolute good player, but we, do, you know, yeah. just need to see a bit more of that. Matty O'Keefe, an old veteran down there, and, and Tommy Freeman as well. The next four boys, Seymour, have got to uh, talk about, you know, reasonably tough jaws. Kai, Achuga, Marutna and Rochi. So, you know, they need to probably get on the board this week. Yeah, just one bloke I reckon that uh, Seymour's flying under the radar to is Harrison Wheeler. Yep. I reckon he's playing really, yep. really good football this year. And uh, Brett Merritt, he kicked 12 last year, he's got 12 already this year, so he's going along pretty well mm. in the midfield. Though. Not not a bad spread of goal kickers too, 17 yeah. goal kickers for this year. So. Yeah. The, uh, so I've got the Swans, mate. I've got to tell you with the Swans, they worry me a little bit. They're the reigning premiers at this stage. And I guess, Bessie, look... We said at the start of the year, John, it was going to be one of the toughest jobs in football. And it must be driving him crazy because their best is very, very good mm -hmm. and they go with anybody. But when they are bad, John, they are not good at all. They play a high possession game and a, 
and uh, they go short when they should be going long and they go long when they should probably incorporate a few more angles their performance to, to their, their performance against Kai with their chipping was terrible okay mm. and if you have a look at I, I think one of their great strengths is their back line and the captain of that back line is def, definitely Tommy Priest the boy who's been around now and uh, he's a great player and cool under pressure is Josh Chapman. I really yeah. like the work Josh he does down back. Michael Tinkler's a great player, we know that. They've got toughness too in, in a lot of areas and Bra Brady Charles, there wouldn't be too many harder than him or Quay Johnson, like they are genuine hard nutters. Big Mitch Bell in the ruck I think has been very good. Paul Fry's a great player when he's on song. You, you know, he's a really, really handy footballer at this level. Tyson Sidebottom, taking a little bit of a while to get going for me, Tyson. I'd, yeah. I'd really like to see him just change that gear up. Andrew Ridden, probably the most interchangeable footballer in the competition. By that, I mean from one end of the ground to the other. Versatile. You lose very, very impact, whatever end of the ground it goes. Big Harry, well, Harry's on 36 goals for the year, but ironically, uh, uh, Harry kicked... 83 for the season and he's got a lot of work to make up and no one's harder on himself than he is and Caden Antonovitz my little mate Caden well Caden it's time to shine mate because it's um, you've got so much talent so much ability you go for a lot of marks I've got to see you holding a few more marks particularly in that goal kicking region you present really well I know that they've used you up the ground on quite a few occasions but when the opportunity's there if Harry's gone the next key forward they've got you. You've got to honour that a little bit more with your Dukes. I know you can, and I expect you to. I, hope you, I hope you do step up, Caden, yeah. too, because, boy, does he turn quick on people. Yeah, yeah but I will say in that, the next highest goal kicker is Paul Fry with six. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you've got Madden with 36 and, and Tonovich with 15. Huge ref for a boy that's just having a fantastic season and, and going to be a player in this competition if we can keep him for a long time. BJ Squire, Johnny, he, he, is, uh, he was fantastic he's, arrived, he's, quite... he's gone from a Volkswagen to a Premier Holden and now he's just up around a Jaguar Rolls Royce type player. Yeah, well, he's going all right, BJ. His game against uh, Kyron was outstanding. He's probably, he was one shining light they had. Yeah. Uh, and look, Mitch Bell could everything he's got in the run. Yeah. I think it's going to be a great game of footy and I'm going to give the Swans one more chance at home in a very, very tight one. The danger concerns for me are for the Swans next week. They've got Seymour this week. It's a must-win game for them because then they've got Tat and they've got three losable games in Uriah, Kyabram and Mansfield. So four points is up there and Seymour in the same situation. Yeah. They have to win as well. I just think Foxy on that, you know, I, I think Seymour for me are going to get the points and for the very reason why at the moment Seymour have kicked 112 more points yeah. than Swans um, and, they're, and they're 50 less in defence. So I, I just think over the ground, I think Seymour have got a little bit more balance yeah, than what Swans cool. at the moment. So I'd... I, I just think, can't see Swans getting the job. Okay. I, think there, I think there's one player in this league who could be a superstar, and I know he's probably pure upset about him, but I think Quay Johnson is just a terrific player. Mm. But when he learns or when he gets his finishing kicking better, mm. he will be a superstar in this league. Well, I'd like to be half as good as you, Quay. But he's a great player. Oh, yeah, don't Great worry. player. Don't worry about that. All right, the last game that we're going to talk about this week is United. They've got a danger game as far as I'm concerned against... The Murray Bombers, to start it off, Johnny, will get you to talk about United. Yeah, look, uh, United uh, ninth on the ladder, 3 4 and 1 with that uh, draw. But uh, Brian Butler, Benny Bingham, and uh, Justin Davies, who's, uh, he's very important. He's kicked nine goals for the year. You know, whether they use him through midfield or down forward, he's been really. Timmy Luby, we know how good he is. Like, he, he kicked 41 goals last year, and he's got 18 this year, so he's good. Matty DeBella is starting to find a little bit of form now, now Matty. Sean Oye in the middle. Uh, he's, he's a very, very important player with him, along with Shane uh, Neves. Jesse McEnany, 17 goals. He's just got a super pair of hands, this mm. bloke, but he's kicking. Uh, kicking a little bit front, yeah, yeah. yeah, and Paul Curry, like he's got 17 goals, uh, seven goals Sorry for the year. He's been really uh, good from up across the, uh, across the forward line. These are games they must win. If they're going to be uh, finals, because they've got Rodgy, Mansfield, Chuka and Uroa. So he's got, they've got some pretty hard games uh, coming up, uh, Foxy. But if you have a look at Justin Davies, last year he kicked 22, he's got 9. Paul Curry, 21, he's got 7. Sean Oy kicked 12, he's got 4. And Shannon Campbell last year, uh, he kicked the 11 last year and 2. But Brody Ross uh, kicked 25 from last year. But then, you know, that turns around with Reese Healy with 7 and uh, Jesse McEnany with uh, 17 goals for the year. Super, super important game. It's a game United must win, but if you go to Echuca and you don't take your A-grade game, you could be in a fair bit of trouble. Yeah, you know, I agree, Johnny. Just over to Echuca too at the moment. You know, we talk about sides that are 
probably thereabouts. And I think Echuca are actually not that far off, you know, with a little bit more cattle next year of being a good side. But it's just that consistency. And you know, I spoke about a few weeks ago about, I think just we have sides where we've got A-grade players and we just don't have enough people who are prepared to get in behind them. I'm not, not saying they're not prepared to, but probably not enough players like Simon Buckley and Matt Pollock and these boys just probably aren't getting the support that they need. And that'll come. That'll come with getting, you know, some more crop of, of uh, younger kids coming through the under-18s and recruits, whatever have you. But, look, they're doing a good job and it is a hard place to go to, Echuca. Well, we've, yeah. we've been there once this year and, and in the past. And it, it, you're right, if you don't have your A-game on, it can be a hard place to go to. But, yeah, look, Lockie Collins, 14 goals this year, boys. Jordan Florence, I'm a big rap for him. A big, tall fella up, up forward as I kicked 11 goals. Um, Liam Wilkinson with five. And Buckley, the bloke we just spoke about, 11 goals, out and out, superstar. I love the way Matty Pollock goes about his footy, boys, just puts his head just over the footy and runs in straight lines. And, you know, obviously having Scotty Beattie back around and blokes like Magna Bosco and, and people like this. Boys, Liam Wilkinson this year has only kicked five goals, kicked 19 last year, so he's probably on par at the moment. Um, Bright, Brighton Shea last year was their leading goal kicker, was he, with 20 goals last yep. year? <clears throat> he was their leading goal kicker. And Tommy Stevens with 14. So at the moment, Lockie Collins is, is leading in the mode with 14, and um, Tom Buckley on six, Jordan Florence with 11. They've had 18 in goal kickers for the year, though, so their spread's not too bad. They're you, getting good goal kickers. You know what the highlight of this game's going to be, Foxy? Kane Morris against Shane Neves. Oh, yeah, it's be a good matchup. Good. It's going to be a fantastic matchup. Oh, boy, Kane, though. This Kane. Get on. Kane Morris. This yeah. kid's got something special. Yeah, now he's is. coming up against a good player. Yep. Let's see how he goes. Yeah. I was about to say too, Johnny, we, we, I got to see United firsthand the other week, and when Shane Neves is around the ground, ground taking the marks, United are playing well. Yep. Very good call. Who's going to win it? Uh, I yeah. think United will win it. Johnny? United have to win it. Yeah. If they I'm, gonna go, be well, finals, I'm going for a two at home. They're oh. a better side at home. Okay. One, I'm going to ask you both one question, and then we're going to wind it right up. I'll say this right now with about, we're at the halfway mark. I would be confident that Rochester, Kai Abram and Benalla will play finals. Yep. Give me your three, Guy. Uh, I would agree with the three you've just said and I'd also say that your role will be in there as well with their form at the moment. Okay. But if you, if you top want the three, three. Top three. Uh, yeah, no, I would, pro I would be saying Kai, Rochi and your at this stage. I oh, just, Benalla haven't done enough Johnny, yet to finish uh, I look, I mean, there's nine sides going for six as we spoke, uh, la, uh, yeah, for six spots. And mine would be uh, Benalla, Rodgy, and Kai. Okay, that, now one. Just said, wasn't well, it? Yeah. It's an echo. In a different yeah. order. Now, one final question I'll ask you out of the sides that are yes. bannering around now. Nominate one at the halfway point that you don't think will play finals football. I'll give you mine to start it off. It hedges on this week, but I'll go the Swans. Well, you took my side. Do I have to be in the top six at the moment, or no, can no. I be anywhere side, on the ladder? Side that mightn't be able to make the six. I. The Swans are being spoken. They're the reigning premier. Yeah, I would. I actually probably, honestly, say Maroona at the moment. Yeah, and that's a big call because I know they're top three. Well, but yeah. from what I saw, okay, on the just sort of uh, that is yeah. inferences, John. Yeah, look, uh, I don't know about United, and I don't know about the Swans. Oh, they have a listen. I ask you for one side. Yeah, but I just and then at the end of the year, <laughs> Captain Custard's going to come out and say, oh, I told you that. I anyway, told you that. If there's anyone out there who knows how to cut a good rug, let's get <laughs> yeah, John Ball. Um, yeah, well, you got a bit of product in there, too. Yeah, don't yeah. You? <laughs> Actually, it's not product. I sneezed and had not been that But anyway, that's what all the greys are coming through. <laughs> yeah. All right. Hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Next week promises to be a beauty. We're going to have two young men for that are playing under 18 football from the Aroa Football Club and we'll have Guy, Mario and JR and yours truly. So until we meet next week, my friends, it's Adios. Adios.